Okay, uh, Bayakel. Um, here, the Moshe Rabbeinu gives over the command to build the, the, the Mishkan and discusses how the different parts of the Mishkan, the different kalim, you different utensils were being made. And the the um, the pasuk is very interesting. The pasuk says that's a paraklamid hey pasuk chabes. The pasuk says vayavo ha'anoshim al hanoshim kol nedivlei v'biu chach v'nesim v'tabas v'chumas kol klizav. So. The men came, so the, this seems to be a difference of opinion how to explain this Pasuk. The Pasuk talks about men and women donating uh, towards the, the, the building of the Mishkan, towards the building of the tabernacle. So some explain it, and that seems to be Rashi's explanation, Im Hanashim that the men came together with the women. I don't know that they would have allowed that today, but the men came together with the women and uh, the, uh, 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 and the women were next to them. Okay, so the, 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 that's, in other words, they came together. The, the, uh, However, there, there are those that explain it that uh, I think the Ramban, by it, that the men came together with the women. In other words, the, 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 the main ones giving towards the Mishkan were the women. And the men accompanied them and went along with them and agreed with them. About the giving, the giving to give it the the donating towards the construction of the Mishkan, and this has its basis on in the Yerushalmi in Shkalim that that uh, that the the Yerushalmi says, look at this nation uh, when they're asked to contribute, when they're asked to contribute to the golden calf. So the men went and ripped off the jewelry of the women and gave it for them. But they gave. And when it came to give for the Mishkan, they also gave. You find people that uh, they, they're, they, they're, they're always giving. But sometimes they'll give even for murder, contribute to murder. And sometimes they will contribute, they will contribute to good causes. And but they, the the Yerushalmi also mentions that if when it came to the Egel Azov, when it came to the golden calf, so the women did not want to give their jewelry, but the men, so to say, took the jewelry away from them and gave it against their will for to to construct the golden calf. But when it came to the Mishkan. The women joined the men, or the men joined the women in giving it to the mish for the construction of the Mishkan. And the the uh, the 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 uh, the, uh, the 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 very strange Balaturim there. The Balaturim says, by Yavoha Nashim Ala Nashim Kalnadi Lev Havi, the the men and the women and all those who contribute the Kalnadiv Lev, whose heart uh inspired them to give. So it says Gematria, the numerical value of those words in the Torah is Uz Ish Ishto Bayim Yachat. Man and his wife came together. So it emphasizes the man and his wife, us, then came. And the question is, why does it say 
Why does it say us then? What and that was part us at that and then they came. That's all part of the gematri. How what how are we to understand it? Us. It should say anush uh, that that ish uh, boyim yachad. Why the word us? What's the significance of the word us? So some explain it that us means that at the, then and not before. Beforehand, the men took the jewelry of the women against their will and gave it to the for idolatry for the golden calf. But now, husband and wife together went to contribute their jewelry and whatever else they had for the construction of the Mishkan. And that's the significance of then to differentiate between the attitude that existed at the time of the building of the Mishkan, of the building of the tabernacle, and the attitude that there was at the time of, of, the, of the making of the golden calf. Now, I want to... I will, it, it, now, I, I, will, I would like to discuss that somewhat in length, but it's also it's significant that in halach it's brought down, not practiced that much today, uh, but in halach it's brought down that, that Rosh Chodesh is a woman's holiday, special holiday for women. And the reason why it's a special holiday for women is so Rabbeinu Yechiel, the brother of the tour, and I've mentioned this actually just recently, Rabbeinu Yechiel, the brother of the tour said, because originally there were supposed to be 15 holidays a year. Uh, uh, 12 holidays were Rosh Chodesh. Of course, you have Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. I'm not talking about them. And so you had you had 12 holidays of Rosh Chodesh and three holidays and three holidays of uh, of the Regalim, Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot. But then, because the men and the, and the 12 holidays why, why 12 holidays of Rosh Chodesh to be holidays? That is because, because the, the were 12 Shvatim. So to commemorate in honor of the 12 Shvatim, each, each Rosh Chodesh was supposed to be a holiday. I guess in the Shana Mu'aberis, either Ador is a repeat, or you could say, because you had Shevet Yosef, that was divided into uh, Menashe and Ephraim. So the, the, it, it consequently, it, you, had, you, you had 13. And in a year when there wasn't an extra month, it was just Shevet Yosef. It was just the tribe of Yosef. But so Rabbi Yechiel says, because the women didn't want to contribute to the, to the golden calf, but they did want to contribute to the to the Mishkan and did contribute to the Mishkan. So, so because of that, the Halad men were were not were not associated to the same degree with the holiday of Rosh Chodesh as women were associated with the holiday of Rosh Chodesh. But so, but the question still is, and this question is raised, why is it that because of the what the women did in giving their jewelry voluntarily for the for the uh, Mishkan and not and, and trying to stop their husbands from taking their jewelry for the golden calf, that because of that they got the holiday of Rosh Chodesh. There has to be between Rosh Chodesh on one hand, perhaps, and either the, the refusal to give their jewelry for the golden calf 
or they're contributing toward the Mishkan. What is the connection between these events? And what is the connection between these events and Rosh Chodesh? Now, now I think that, so some say the, the, the answer given is because the Mishkan was set up on Rosh Chodesh Nisan. And since the Mishkan was set up on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, so that uh, the, the since the Mishkan was set up on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, so the 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 uh, the women the women uh, started the, the, the holiday of Rosh Chodesh was given over to them. I have trouble with that. A number of things. First of all. Okay, that's not such a serious question, but the women were not involved in any special significant manner on Rosh Chodesh Nisan in the setting up of the Mishkan. Their involvement uh, took place, in, their involvement took place uh, after uh, somewhere between the the uh, 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 be, be, between after after Sukkot uh, excuse me uh, after Yom Kippur after Yom Kippur to till uh, till uh, 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 Kislev their involvement was in in donating for the Mishkan in working in the contrib contributions of the Mishkan and all that began uh, the day after Yom Kippur the day after Yom Kippur, and it was more or less concluded the work before the Mishkan actually was set up. All that was concluded by by Chafhe Kislev. So, but so why why is it that the, the we identify what the women did with Rosh Chodesh Nisan? But even more than that, but that could we could answer very easily. However. More troubling is, so then Rosh Chodesh Nisan should be the holiday. Why every Rosh Chodesh is the holiday? Why is every Rosh Chodesh the holiday? Now, I think that uh, if you take a look, there's a certain Rambam. Now, it's clear, it's clear that the women were very much involved in the donating to the Mishkan, According to some, they played the major role in the donations to the Mishkan. And also, it's clear that the women were involved. We see from Sukkim, they were involved in, in the knitting that had to take place, the uh, sewing that had to take place in towards the building of the Mishkan. All this is mentioned in, in, the, in, in the This Week, etc., now the Rambam in uh, the Rambam in Parakalif of Hilchos Beis of Chira, the Rambam says, "A bonim mikdash belayla." We do not build the base of mikdash at night. The base of mikdash has to be built in the day. There's a mitzvah building the base of mikdash, and according to the Rambam, the mitzvah of building the base of mikdash and the mitzvah of building the mishkan. Co both come within the same mitzvah. You shall, they shall make for me a sanctuary and I will dwell in their midst. So the, but in boneness of Mikdash Belayla, we don't build the base of Mikdash at night. Because we learn it out. Because the blueprint for the building of the base of Mikdash in certain respects is what happened in the Mishkan. And in the Mishkan, the Torah tells us, the Mishkan was set up in the day. In the day you, you put it up and not at night. 
And you're involved in the building of the Mishkan from dawn until nightfall. And and everybody is required in the mitzvah of building the base and make the side to give aid and help, personal help, with themselves, with their labor, and with their money. Anoshim Vinoshim, both men and women, Kemikdash Hamidbar, like the sanctuary of the desert, just like in the Mishkan, men and women were involved in the building and the contributing towards the Mishkan. So too, in in regard to the base Hamikdash, men and women are required to participate through contribution, through labor, to, to in, in, the bil- in, in, in the building of the Beis HaMikdash. And uh, it, it, so, it, so the question is asked, and this is the type of question that I've mentioned before, that there are many, many answers to. Now, usually, almost every question has many, many answers, but usually, one, if one answer is correct, the other answer is not correct. Uh, we don't know which answer is correct, and we have to study all the answers. But there are certain type of questions that there are many answers, and they could all be correct, and you can have some of them being correct. And very often, there is no contradiction between the, the two answers. Sometimes we do something for many reasons, not just for one reason. And so we have the answers of that nature. And that is true about this question also. There are, this is the type of question, there are many answers. I'm not going to go into all the answers because uh, I probably would be able to speak uh, till next year, till we get back to the cedra again. But the... Uh, I'm, I'm going to focus on two answers. There might be better answers, but that doesn't take away from the fact that these are also answers to that question. The, so the, the question is, we have a general rule that when it comes to positive commandments, women, if it's a, a commandment that's based on time, so women are exempt unless there is a special reason to make them required in the mitzvah. For example, uh, the, the, mitzvah, the mitzvah of Kriyashma. Of course, the woman says Kriyashma. She has a very big mitzvah. But a woman is not required to say Kriyashma. Why? Because Kriyashma, saying the Shema, is a mitzvah that's dependent upon time. The mitzvah of Shema is to be said in the morning and it's to be said in the evening. And a mitzvah that's dependent upon time, women are exempt from that mitzvah. Of course, we have many, many exceptions, the holidays being an exception. Uh, the, but the general rule, the general rule is that women are exempt from mitzvahs that are dependent, that are dependent upon time. But even, the, but even those women chooses to fulfill them. She has a mitzvah if she does them. So the question is, the, the mitzvah building the base of mitzvah, that's only in the day. Since it's only in the day, so women should be exempt Women should be exempt from the mitzvah building the base of mikdash because it's a mitzvah that's dependent upon time. So why is it that women were required in the mitzvah of building the base of mikdash and it, it required uh, in the mitzvah of building the mishka? But it's a mitzvah that's dependent upon time. And if it's a mitzvah that's dependent upon time, they should be exempt from that mitzvah. Now, one answer is we have 
mitzvahs, that the action of the mitzvah and the fulfillment of the mitzvah is the same action. Uh, an example. Let's say if a, if a person uh, takes a lul of an esro and he shakes the lul of an esro. So the action of the mitzvah and the, the action of the mitzvah and the, the, the fulfillment of mitzvah is the same thing. The fulfillment of the mitzvah is shaking the lula of an esro. Another example. Uh, yeah, uh, so another example would be the mitzvah of eating matzah. When you, the mitzvah of eating the matzah is both the action and the fulfillment of the mitzvah. However, we have mitzvahs that are not that way. We have mitzvahs where the action of the mitzvah is one thing and the fulfillment of the mitzvah is separate from the action of the mitzvah. Now, I'll give you an example. Let's say putting a mezuzah up on, uh, by the doorway. The action is putting the mezuzah up, knocking the nails into the mezuzah, or how, however you place the mezuzah on the doorway. That's the action of the mitzvah. The fulfillment of the mitzvah is not in putting it up, but the fulfillment of the mitzvah is in having it up. My uncle would say about, let's say, the mitzvah of Simcha and Yantif, the mitzvah of being happy on Yantif, of being joyful on Yantif. We know there's a mitzvah Yantif to eat basar biyayin, to eat meat and drink wine. But my uncle would say the fulfillment, that's the action of the mitzvah. The fulfillment of the mitzvah is in the feeling of joy that eating and drinking enabled the feeling that came afterwards from the eating and drinking the feeling of satisfaction, that, that, that is the fulfillment of the mitzvah. It's a state of being on Yontif that is the fulfillment of the mitzvah. And the same thing my uncle would say is true about the laws of Avelis, the laws of mourning. A mourner has certain practices he has to sit low. Uh, a mourner is not allowed to wear leather shoes, which are considered to be uh, very uh, considered to be a comfort. There are all kinds of laws regarding mourning, but the fulfillment of the mitzvah, my uncle would say, is in in the feelings of sadness and not feeling joy or happiness that is enabled by the restrictions that one uh, uh, assumes during his period of mourning. So you have mitzvahs that the action of the mitzvah, the action that enables the fulfillment of the mitzvah, and which is a requirement, is separate from the fulfillment of the mitzvah. I think it's obvious that when it comes to building the base on Mikdash, I would say the fulfillment of the mitzvah is not in the building of the base on Mikdash, not in the construction of the base on Mikdash. But it's in having the base hamikdash, in keeping the base hamikdash. You know, many institutions, good institutions, they have building campaigns, and they build big edifices. But the fulfillment of the mitzvah is not in the construction. 
but I think the fulfillment of the mitzvah is in having that edifice that it enables the noble work to continue. We speak of building shuls, of building synagogues, of building yeshivas, of building buildings of Jewish education, of building buildings to that give the ability to do acts of chesed. But the fulfillment of the mitzvah is not in the building. The fulfillment is in having the building to accomplish these tasks. And the same thing was true about the base of Mikdash. The mitzvah was not the building of the base of Mikdash. The mitzvah is in having the base of Mikdash. The mitzvah of having the base of Mikdash was not limited to the day. The mitzvah of having the base Hamikdash was day and night, 24-7. That's the build, that's the, the fulfillment of the mitzvah. A mitzvah that is mitzvah sase shazman grama, that women are exempt from. That's only a mitzvah whose fulfillment is dependent upon time. But a mitzvah that is, in the, the fulfillment of the mitzvah is continuous. 24-7. It's not a mitzvah that's dependent upon time. The actions, the building, the construction, that might be dependent upon time. But the fulfillment of the mitzvah, when is the mitzvah fulfilled? In the having of the base of Mikdash. Since it's in the having of the base of Mikdash, so women are required because the having of the base of Mikdash. And we could say to a certain degree, the same thing is true about the mitzvah of a shul. There is a mitzvah on a community to have a shul. The fulfillment. There is a mitzvah in building the shul, but that's the maisa mitzvah. That's the action of the mitzvah. The fulfillment of the mitzvah is in having it. So, the the uh, the so uh, the, the the so when was the when did the Jewish people fulfill the mitzvah of the mishkan? we could suggest, was not during the construction. The construction was the Maisa HaMitzvah. It was the action of the Mitzvah. The action that you were required to do in order to enable the build, the, the having of a Mishkan. So because of that, because, because of that, women, women were required, women are required in the in the in the in the mitzvah in the mitzvah of the uh, of building the mishkan, that's why women were required to participate. They weren't forced because no one was forced to participate in contributing to the mishkan, but a requirement it was. Now, and for that reason, women were required to participate in the building of the base Hamikdash as well. Now, so the fulfillment of the mitzvah was, was on Rosh Chodesh. But the question is, that explains why it was on Rosh Chodesh, even though their actions was long before Rosh Chodesh Nisan. But the question is, why every Rosh Chodesh? Why every Rosh Chodesh? I think... Now, my, my uncle says a very interesting thought. He mentions a Ramban in the Sefer HaMitzvot. And the Ramban, that they, it was really a diuk that my grandfather made, that Rosh Chodesh was to be considered a holiday inside the Beis HaMikdash. But outside the Beis HaMikdash, on a Torah level, of course, 
rabbinically, it was observed outside the Mishkan, also outside the base of Mikdash also. But uh, the it, uh, re, 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 because other holidays, you have all kinds of laws that are associated on a biblical level with with Rosh Chodesh. Uh, with with uh, with uh, 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 associated with the holidays, let's say, Sukkot. We sit in the Sukkah. We take the lul of an esrog. We refrain from doing work on the Yomim Tovim. Shavuos also, we refrain from doing work. Sukkot. Pesach, we eat matzah. We, all of this was outside the base of Mikdash. So these holidays were public holidays. Whereas Rosh Chodesh, the basic mitzvah of Rosh Chodesh is not taking any specific religious objects and for the most part, there is no requirement to refrain from work. And even the recitation of the halal that is said that is only outside. The, it's a custom. It's a custom, an early custom. It's mentioned in the Gemara, but it was a custom. A matter of fact, the opinion of the Rambam, that's not the Ashkenazic practice, but the opinion of the Rambam is that when you say Halal Rosh Chodesh, you don't make a brach on it. Because Halal Rosh Chodesh is only a custom. It's not a, it's not a, a mitzvah. It's a, it came a mitzvah as a result of the custom. And any, any mitzvah that has its foundation in custom does not require a bracha. So Halal on Rosh Chodesh is all, uh, that we say outside the base of Mikdash is only a custom. But inside the base of Mikdash, Rosh Chodesh was a holiday. There was a mitzvah of simcha. There was a mitzvah of joy. And consequently, there was a mitzvah of saying hollow on Rosh Chodesh inside the base of Mikdash. And if the mitzvah of hollow is a mitzvah the Arisa, as some suggest, the Ramban's opinion is that way. It's part of the mitzvah of Simchas Yantif. So halal inside the Beis HaMikdash was a mitzvah, the Arisa, a biblical mitzvah. So we see the difference between Rosh Chodesh and the other holidays. Rosh Chodesh is, Rosh Chodesh is, is a private holiday. It's not a public holiday. It's a hidden holiday on a Torah level. The main aspects of Rosh Chodesh were not required to be celebrated outside the base of Mikdash. It was just the giving of the Karban Musa that was, set, that was done that made it a holiday. Whereas the other holidays were celebrated both inside the base of Mikdash and outside the base of Mikdash. In a sense, the base of Mikdash represents a private form of worship, not a public. When I talk about private, I'm not talking about a minion and not a minion. I'm talking open to everybody or private. So the, the nature of Rosh Chodesh is one of privacy. Personal, pr and privacy is always a, a more personal relationship. The Medrash Rabbah says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, I think it's the Medrash Rabbah in Bereshis, the, or Shemal, sorry, the Medrash Rabbah says, that when the Mishkan was made, HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, Lo matzasi yofe min 
I did not find anything nicer than privacy. It represented a private form of, of service of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it could be that to a certain degree, see how, how the Jewish people who worship the golden calf, it was a public display. It's almost like part of the reason for their worship was this need for public display. There's nothing wrong with public worship. We do it all the time. A lot of our service is public. But we have to know there's some special feature in the idea of private worship. Private service to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Lo matzasi yafim in atzniyos. And there's nothing better than, I didn't find anything more beautiful than modesty. And the truth of the matter is, we as Jews, we live a life inside our tents, inside our houses. And that represents Sneos privacy. When Bilam blessed against his will the Jewish people, but it was expressive of things that he noticed. One of the things he noticed is the privacy of the tents. How the door of one tent did not face the other tent. To a certain degree, this is the difference between life in America and even Jewish life and life in Europe. There was a greater sense of privacy, of personal life. Today, everything everybody does has to be put on the internet. What a person ate for lunch, and a lot worse. Everything is put on the internet. A lot worse, a lot better. The sense of privacy has been lost. Today, we don't have that concept of Lomotsasi Yafem and Atsneos. I didn't find anything better than modesty. People, when they go to demonstrations, they have to wear the talasim. There's no mitzvah of wearing a talas at a demonstration. I don't know where that came from but it came from a, a lack of understanding the significance of modesty. Matter of fact, the whole, the whole mitzvah of covering oneself with a talus has its origin in modesty. Shem was Zolcha merited to have the mitzvah of having a talus Shem is the ancestor of the Jewish people, the son of Noah. Why? Because when he saw Noah naked, he covered Noah up. And here, people, they want to use it for their demonstration. If they would be walking with their talus all day long, okay, no. But here they want to show it off. It became a costume. The talus is not a costume. Now, so this is so perhaps I think, and we know today it's somewhat much less so, but Ishto Zubeso. The woman was always identified with the house. The man was identified to a much larger degree with the outside. The woman represented the concept of tzniyus. When the three malachim dressed as sojourners, 
met Avram. They asked him where Sarah, his wife, is. Be Bohel. Sarah prepared food for them and everything, but she was Bohel. She was in the tent. Sarah is the symbol of Tznius, of modesty. The women were always identified with the sense of modesty that men did not necessarily have to the degree that they probably should have had. Modesty is a positive thing. I, obviously, they have to go out. But women were always the symbol of modesty. Men have to learn from women the, the concept of modesty. And I think perhaps because Rosh Chodesh is the holiday of modesty. The base of Mikdash is identified with the service of modesty. Because of that, when the women refuse to contribute to the to the to the to, to the Egel Azov, which emanated from this idea of public display. Probably some of the people that stood in front of Dago Zav wore Talesim also. Like some of the, uh, uh, of the show-offs that go to the demonstrations with Talesim. So, so, because of that, Rosh Chodesh became the women's holiday as a reward because Rosh Chodesh symbolized the service, the private personal service in the, in, in the base of Mikdash. Yes, they fulfilled the mitzvah Rosh Chodesh Nisan, but Rosh Chodesh Nisan represented a special type of service that goes Baruchel the private personal service, the type of service that women had even before the building of the Mishkan. Consequently, Rosh Chodesh, every Rosh Chodesh became the holiday of the women. That's how we can understand it. Now, uh, I, I want to, but I want to suggest another possible answer to the original question. Uh, also, I just, uh, yeah, uh, another, another possible answer to the original question. And that is that the, the, uh, the mitzvah of building the base Hamikdash in the Mishkan is different than most of the mitzvahs in the Torah. There are other mitzvahs like it. The mitzvah of putting on tefillin, the mitzvah of davening, the mitzvah of saying shema, the mitzvah of taking lul of an esro, the mitzvah of putting on mezuzahs, those are all requirements on the individual. If a person has a house, he's in, it's incumbent upon him or he lives in a house, it's incumbent upon him to put the mezuzah up. Every morning, a man has to put on tefillin. A man has to say shema. Everybody, I know that's not too popular. According to many, everybody, men and women, have to daven every day. It's a mitzvah on the individual. Most mitzvahs, a mitzvah on the individual. Of course, there's a mitzvah to the Tzibor, but many individuals come to daven together. But we have mitzvahs that are mitzvahs on the nation, on the people as a group, on the community. And the mitzvah of building the base on Mikdash is a mitzvah in the community. It doesn't originate with the individual. 
I am required to participate in the building of the base Hamikdash because I am part of the community and I recognize that I am part of the community. Consequently, I have to participate as part of the community. And when we say that women are exempt from mitzvah sasi shahazman grama, that women are exempt from mitzvahs that are dependent upon time, unless there is another reason for them to be exempt, that halacha doesn't apply. When do we say mitzvah that's dependent upon time, women are exempt, that if it, that's if it originates on the individual. But if it originates on the community and we have to participate because we're part of the community, then it's not that way. Then women are not exempt. The obligation of building a mishkan, a base hamikdash, that's a mitzvah on the community. It's a community responsibility. And I have to participate. Every individual has to participate because he's part of that community. Now, the, there is a certain question that could be raised against that. And the, the question that could be raised against it is that there is, a, by Spiros Omer, by the counting of the Omer, there is a dispute between many Rishonim, if somebody forgets, now there's a mitzvah of counting sphere. What's the mitzvah of counting sphere? We count 49 days from the second day of Pesach, the last day being the day before Shavuos. Shavuos is always the 50th day from the second day of Pesach. So the we count 49 days, seven weeks. Now, what happens, and every individual counts, first day, young Yom Echad Baomer, then the next, today is the first day of the count of the Omer. Next day, today is two days in the count of the Omer. Then there's three days in the count of the Omer. Then on the seventh day, we say, today is seven days, which is one week in the count of the Omer. And on the eighth day, today is eight days, which is one week and one day in the count of Omer. And, and it continues that way until the 49th day. We say today is 49 days, which is seven weeks in the count of the Omer. But there's a dispute. Let's say somebody forgot the count. He can't, forgot the count on the eighth day. Does he have a mitzvah of counting on the ninth day? So there's a dispute. And the Rashba's opinion seems to be that the Rashba's opinion, the Rambam seems to be in the, the contrary to that, but the Rashba's opinion is that he counts anyway. And he uses the expression Im Shor Yisrael with the other Jews, together with the Jews who didn't forget the count, so to say. So the question is, what kind of count is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a count. But once you skip one number, all the numbers after that cease to be a count. A count starts with one and ends with 49. But from the point that you miss that one day onward, there's no longer a count. Even if you say each day is a separate mitzvah, but it's a mix of continuing the count. So my uncle explained that, that the mitzvah is a mitzvah of the tzibor. It's a mitzvah on the community to count. The individual joins the community in the count. And consequently, even if I miss a day, the count continues because it's not my count. I am participating in the count of the community. So one could raise a question if that's the case. Now, according to almost everybody, with the exception of the Ramban, I'm sure there are some people 
that follow the Ramban, some shitas that follow the Ramban, but almost according to all opinions, women are exempt from the mitzvah of Sphiris Omer, from counting the Omer, because it's a mitzvah that's dependent upon time. But if it's a mitzvah of the community, and I'm participating as part of the community, so women should be required in the mitzvah of Sphiris Omer, just like they're required in the mitzvah of building the base of Mikdash, which is also a mitzvah on the community. How are we to understand it? But I think that the way we can understand it is there are two types of mitzvahs of the tzibur. One mitzvah starts with it being an obligation on the community. And once there is an obligation on the community, I, as part of the community, have to participate in that mitzvah. But then there are mitzvahs that start with the individual. By spirus Omer, by the counting the Omer, it's a mitzvah on the individual to participate in the count of the community. It begins with the individual, the obligation. Consequently, since it's dependent upon time, women are exempt from it. But where the mitzvah starts with the community, starts with the community, and I, ha I have to participate because I recognize that I am part of the community. Like the mitzvah building the base of Mikdash, then there is no special exemption of this nature. There are other exemptions for children who are learning Torah, whatever. But, but there, uh, there is no, no special exemption if the obligation begins with the community. So I think this is perhaps the reason why it is that way. Now, I want to discuss a little bit the war. The mitzvah of Melchemist mitzvah, and even Melchemist Rishus, wherever there's a mitzvah regarding war, it's pointed out that, and certainly in regard to Yisrael, uh, you could argue about Amalek, you could argue even about the Shivamim, but the mitzvah of war of defense, Milchemes Yisrael Miyat Sor Lehem, the war of the Jewish people against the nations that attack them, that's a mitzvah on the Tzibor. And the no, there's no question about that. But it originates, it originates, it originates with the Tzipur. Why women don't have to participate in the war, that's for a special reason. Uh, they are not warriors. Women's role is not one of warriors. There's a, a, a special reason for it, but it's a mitzvah that's on the tzibur, and where war, where fighting is not involved, it could be that women are are, are required to participate in a mochemis mitzvah to aid in the war effort. We in America, the war effort would be to 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 participate in demonstrations. To, to apply political pressure. And the Jews in Eretz Israel, there are probably help that could be given. Of course, we can't abandon civilian life. We need people to take care of the children. We need people to take care of civilian life as well. All that is also part of the war effort. But the mitzvah of wage, what is the source of that mitzvah? 
I mentioned my father would always mention the Medrash and Chuma, the Miri in Sanhedrin also mentions it. It's Soros and Midianim Kit Sorim Heim Lachem. Harass the Midianites because they are harassing you. Mikan, the Medrash says, from here we see Habar Lahar Chahash Game Lahar Go. If someone comes to kill you, you get up and kill him. And this is on a national level, not on an individual level. Obviously, if someone comes with a gun to shoot me, shoot me, I can shoot him first in self-defense. It's something that people today don't realize, uh, at least uh, depending who's doing the shooting and who's getting shot. But the, the, that's, that's the mitzvah of pursuer. To kill a pursuer that's coming to kill me. But there's a halacha of pursuer on a national level, as I've mentioned many times. That means if we were attacked on October 7th, it wasn't just the individuals that were living in southern Israel near Gaza that were attacked. We were attacked. And they are pursuers of us. And anybody that doesn't recognize that, if anyone doesn't recognize that they are part of this war of defense, they don't see themselves as Klal Yisrael, as part of the Jewish people. It originates. It originates with a requirement on the on the tzibur, on the community, on the nation. And we as part of the nation, by recognition of the fact that we are part of the nation, we have that obligation to participate. Why am I mentioning it? And why am I mentioning it with so much emotion? I, I just, I mean, we so many people have been injured. I have a grandchild who's fighting. I, but I, I, the attitude of some people is just unbelievable. They don't understand. They're fighting to save their lives. And their attitude, I just heard a, a situation today. Two ladies were walking in a religious section of Eretz Yisrael. I don't want to even mention the name of the city. I'm sure a lot of people would guess it. And a soldier was passing by. And one lady, a very fine lady, said to the soldier, I want to thank you for what you're doing for the Jewish, for us. And the other lady said to that lady, did you thank the boys learning in Kola? Now, I'm not trying to undermine the importance of learning in Kola and even the impact that it has for the Jewish people. It's like, but don't you recognize right now that these people are saving your lives? Where is the thank you? You know, I'm uh, 74 years old. Soon I'll be 75. And I remember yeshiva dinners going way back. Today, they're a little different than they used to be, but there are certain things that never change. When it comes to yeshiva dinner, there's always a guest of honor. And most of the time, the guest of honor is not somebody who's sitting and learning in color. They don't make dinners for somebody who was sitting and learning his whole life in color. Why do they make dinners? They want to thank. Well, they want to raise money. That's the first thing. But they want to thank the individual who donated money for them. It probably would be a good idea from time to time to honor some of the people sitting and learning Torah also. 
But I never heard anybody complain. I, in fact, the, the only one that ever complained was me, that I'm aware of. That, uh, so what, what's the answer? Why is it that the dinners are made in honor of the people? The answer is these people enable the others to learn Torah. They enable them to learn Torah. If not for these people who are working and donating money to the yeshivas, yeshiva boys wouldn't be able to sit and learn. Eh, there probably would be some that real, had real and serious nefesh. But I, I, I suspect the numbers would be somewhat less than they are today. The, the, um, and another thing, but this has changed somewhat. In the old days, I noticed that all the yeshiva dinners in the United States, they, uh, when they had a guest speaker, that's changed already. When they had a guest speaker, it would usually be a professor or a rabbi who had a doctorate. All either got their doctorate or were teaching in college campuses, which the yeshiva would consider about the Zaragil Rice and Shri Chazdamim, the worst of sins possible. Uh, not that I'm finding much favor with what's going on in the college campuses today. And honestly, what goes on in the college campuses today makes one wonder. Uh, how they can protect themselves from the anti-Semitic and anti-Torah and, uh, and anti-morality that is going on on the college campuses. But uh, they, 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 this is what drew people for money. So it's the same thing. They were enablers of Torah. These people, to me, seem to be so stupid. It's not only that the soldiers are saving your life. You think they wouldn't have been in Yerushalayim a couple days later? The, the, where people don't remember what happened to the yeshiva boys in Hebron. At least if they learn a Pasuk Rashi. Rashi says about Pace, the first Pesach night, in Mitzrayim, regarding the Pasuk, that you shouldn't go out, outside. Aten lo seitzu. Why? Because, because, uh, because uh, the Shema'ach when a destroyer is there to destroy, there's no difference between a tzaddik and a rasha. And believe me, the the soldiers that are fighting in Israel, they are they, right now. They're certainly tzaddikim. So for your yeshiva dinner, you will give a dinner and you'll say thank you for those who enable you to learn Torah. This one is saving your life. So we could say, you know. We say in creation, our sages tell us you have people that their money is more important to them than their lives, and their lives are more important than their money. So they give, they don't care about the fact that their lives are being saved. They care about where they're getting their money. But fools, if Israel will be over attacked and there wouldn't be these soldiers fighting for you, the Damascus is coming. They'll kill you like they killed the Jews in Hebron, the yeshiva boys in Hebron who are bigger must meet him. Bigger tzaddikim. You think you'll be able to learn Torah? Dead people can't learn Torah. You should know these soldiers not only give you the ability to live, to survive, for your children to survive. They're also 
bigger enablers of your being able to learn Torah. If not for them, you wouldn't be able to learn Torah either. They have the schus of saving the Jewish people and saving the Torah as well. Not any less than those that are sitting in the yeshivas. I am not talking against yeshiva boys not going to the war. I'm not talking about that at all. But I'm talking about the simple decency to be able to say thank you. Thank you for saving my life. Thank you for enabling me to learn Torah. They're not worse than these rich people, many who, who violate the halacha completely, that are the guest of honors at your dinner. And I think that that's what we, why is it that there's this attitude? The reason there is this attitude is because we, the many in the Shivasha community are concerned that people will come to idolize the soldiers if they say thank you. So they have to be in denial that they are the ones that enable them to live, to be in denial of the fact that they're the ones that are giving them the opportunity to learn Torah to raise families. Without danger, let me add, without the same danger that they themselves undergo. So, because they, 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 they're scared that people will come to idolize them if people say thank you. The Purim is coming up. Purim is coming up and uh, the, the fools will probably make I'm not into costumes, uh, whatever, even though it's mentioned in the, the Farsham about costumes. I, 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 but they, they will allow you to dress up as any type of horror figure. Uh, you can dress up as Haman. You can dress up as Achashverosh. We know what Achashverosh Gave his approval to him initially. But you can't dress up as an Israeli soldier. Why is it? Because they're scared. They're scared that people will come to give recognition to the soldiers for what they're doing. It's time that we overcome the stupidity. We, if one, say... These people are learning Torah. Torah is very important for Klal Yisrael. But if you want to know why there is going to be, and there is going to be a campaign against not uh, against not giving deferments to the to the to the to the boys learning yeshiva after the war, there always is. You know why it is? Because we don't give them recognition. If we don't give them recognition for what they're doing, for putting their lives on the line, you can't expect them to give us recognition. Okay, so please put questions in the chat. What was the que the Pasuk at the beginning that you started with in the Balatorum? Uh, one second. I'll tell you in a second. Vayaboa hanoshim al hanoshim kol nadiv lei. Uh, called it the Leve Havi, Havi. So Gematria, look in the Baal Torim, Oz Ish Bishto Boim Yachat. So the, the, uh, so the, what I would really wanted to add, because the Gemara says, the Medra says that the Ish, the uh, Isha, so if there is, if Ish has a Yud in it, and Isha has a Hay in it. So if Shechina Shruya Benehem, if God is part of their relationship, so then you have ish v'isha. But if shechin is not, it's eish and eish. You have fire and fire. Uh, but when it came to the mishkan, the mishkan, they were coming to God to make to show that God was part of their relationship. It was yachat. So it served that purpose of promoting that relationship of ish v'isha with shechina shruya b'neihem. They came together. 
And that was the idea of us. Because us, on one hand, means not before, but us also means to, to use the opportunity now. Now was the opportunity. Now they had the opportunity to intensify that relationship of making HaKadosh Baruch Hu as part of their relationship. I'm quoting you here, but us is a spontaneous reaction. That's right, a spontaneous reaction. It was a spontaneous, they used the opportunity, a spontaneous reaction. Uh, it was instinctive. When it's instinctive, it, it, it's when something is spontaneous, it shows who you really are. When you think about something, you decide. But it, it's you, the way you react automatically says who you really are. Um, if someone makes a donation towards building a shawl or a mikvah, do they get a mitzvah when they make the donation or is it only when the building is completed? I think, uh, okay, uh, my sense is it'll be, it'll be uh, the idea of a of a tova HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mitzdarev Lamaisa. But if you give money for a mikvah and the mikvah is not built, I don't know that there will be a, that, the, that there's a real mitzvah, but you'll probably get a reward because of Machshav Tov HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mitzdarev Lamaisa. But also if the Maisa Mitzvah is first, you're doing a Maisa Mitzvah now when you give the money, right? Yeah, well, there's probably a reward for a Maisa Mitzvah also, irregardless. But the but the, the Kiyom HaMitzvah, you only have when you, uh, afterwards. Okay. Um... Uh, you know, just a comment in regard to you know being criticized for thanking the soldier uh in i don't know what it's like now but like 25 years ago if you would lend money uh, to a student in a Haredi yeshiva they wouldn't say thank you because they they because they were very uh mocked that they didn't want to do uh onaz dvarim yeah, but okay, one person yeah. said well, some, yeah. some of them though quoted Rav Shlomo Zalman and Orbach that you're allowed to say yashikah but not more than that yeah, okay, so uh, I, I just wondering what they would do. Okay, what, what they'll do about the that's for lending money, yeah, not giving money. No, no, no. When if, oh, if they, no, would, no, lend, if they yeah, would take yeah, a yeah, loan, yeah. they wouldn't yeah. say thank you. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay, uh, you, uh, I heard from my father, you could do what's normal in the and thanking them. You know, it's a, you don't have to run three blocks if you see him across the street to say it. But if you're passing him by, you could say thank you very much, or I appreciate you really helped me out. Mm -hmm. That's normal. Okay. Um, a question here. Um, well, for, for Haredi yeshiva students who want to join the Israeli army, are they allowed to make conditions uh, like not certainly. being around women or having special levels of cash? Certainly, 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 certainly. Um. Here's a complicated one. Uh, in Parshas Vayishlach, Shimon and Levi were criticized by Yaakov for killing out uh, uh, everyone in Shechem be because, uh, <laughs> according to your father's chat, they could have uh, cha changed Shechem by other methods. Well, uh, here, here, what about you, here, here we, I think after so many years uh, of, of the state of Israel, we know that there are no other methods, unfortunately, that work. Right. So does so so we understand that, but does the fact of world opinion or public opinion play a role in us not doing it a hundred percent, or that's no excuse? Uh, that that's a decision that has to be made by the leaders of Israel, who are it's like a doctor uh, with expertise and knowing all expertise the expertise that have expertise in the area. Uh, obviously, there are, sometimes even they make uh, uh, make it, colossal mistakes that everybody recognizes. But uh, but sometimes sometimes uh, but the, to deal with a particular situation, if the person is honest in dealing with it and he's not stupid and he has uh, knowledge, you now it's both. You have to take diplomacy in account and military situation into account. The problem is sometimes they focus only on one. Um, someone asks, is there a, a source that B'nai Torah uh, would be taken first and being chosen for battle? Or there... 
my my sense is that if you want a, a source for it, that you they, they, by Amalek it says Pchalano Anashim Anashim Yerechet and all that uh, that. Uh, uh, I, but my sense is that was a special halacha in that war. That's one, and uh, that uh, that uh, taken anashim yerechet and those who who volunteer are certainly mekadeshim shemayim. There's no question about it. And the the big issue, I mean, it's a shear in itself, is the impact that the army will have on their religious nature. And uh, that is a big problem, and it really varies from individual to individual, from person to person, and uh, and from situation to situation. You know, that's uh, that's the that's the big issue that has to be evaluated. But there are all kinds of things that you could do, even if you're not in the army, to help the war effort. Uh, and I, for some reason, uh, they don't emphasize that point. What about the 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 Gemara about um, about the uh, which maybe doesn't apply to Muhammad's mitzvah, but the uh, Kohen when you'd read the the Mishloch Muhammad that the Gemara sought in one place, even people if they talk between putting on their Shal Rosh and Shal Yad, that's they, uh, they, so meaning they wanted okay. people into any of eras. Yeah, okay, but that's by Muhammad's Rishus. We still have Muhammad's Rishus today. Right. Okay. And that's only in regard to, and, the, and that's uh, only when there's a Kohen also. Which, um, okay, but that's a yeah. source that they wanted people who were, yeah, yeah who, that's who were yeah. Of, uh, very. Far by the way, away from doing was, it, 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 no, it was only those that are confident. It's only those that are yare ma berish of the So they had to. They on one hand they had to have year up in the sins that they did. Yeah, this is in regard to. In about, other words, just because he talked between Phil and Shiros and Phil and Shulyad, or the Roshami says in the Pesukei de Zimra, whatever it is, that doesn't possible them. It's the fear that they have that they'll be punished as a result of it during the war that potters them. So this is in regard to about the holiday, Rosh Chodesh being a holiday for women in Sfirah uh Isn't the Yantif of Shavuos for the Tibor also for women, and doesn't this Include Sphirosa Omer for men and women. Well, I'm not sure what the question is. I I I was taking care of the, my baby, so I, I missed exactly what you were saying. But uh, when you're talking about the Rashba in uh, about Sphirosa yeah, Omer, so, the, so you know, Sphirosa Omer is a halacha of counting, but it's a it's a halacha that starts with the individual to become part of the community. Consequently. If a woman who's exempt from mitzvah sase shazman grama, she's exempt from the mitzvah of Sphira Salmer. But where it starts with the community going down to the individual, like Mohama or like Binyan Beis Hamikdash, their women are not exempt on the basis of mitzvah sase shazman grama. But Sphira Salmer is a separate mitzvah from Shav the holiday. Yes, Shavu yes, it's a separate you, mitzvah. You can have Shavuos without having Sphira Salmer. Yes, right. and anyway, women, yeah, that's correct. That's correct. That's okay. So thank you, everyone. Um...